video is me just going off the cuff. And it turns out, friends, that I'm not very good at it. it turns out I need structure <laughs> to survive. But we're gonna power through. Okay. Should we check in with Coco Moose? Maybe she's ready to come back. Ooh, she says no, she's not ready. All right, let's, let's move on to our next pile of middle grade books. The first one is The True Definition of Neva Bean by Christine Kendall. And this book is for anyone who is in need of like a coming of age story, a book that um, deals with like real life issues that you might be going through. So Neva Bean is growing up, her body is changing. She's living with her grandparents for the summer. Um, her whole neighborhood is changing. She lives in West, West Philadelphia and her brother is also going through some changes and she's worried about him and he's older than high school. If you really like realistic fiction stories that deal with um, like things that you might be going through, like in Babysitter's Club or Dork Diaries, then Neva Bean is definitely for you. And the cool thing about Neva Bean, which is it's called the true definition of Neva Bean, is that she's writing her own dictionary because she is trying to understand the world around her. So she's trying to write it down and define it so that she can understand it. And then you as the reader can also understand it. It's a really great realistic fiction book. The next middle grade chapter book on this pile is A Thousand Questions by Sadia Faruqi. And another name I recognize, so I flipped to the back of the book to read the biography where I learned that she wrote the Yasmin Early Reader and Chapter Book series, which is a series I very, very much enjoy. So I picked this book up because I know I trust the author. I know I like their writing style. So A Thousand Questions is about two girls, Mimi and Sakina. Mimi is spent, spending the summer in Pakistan with her grandparents and she's going through a lot. She's journaling a lot. Sakina is working in a kitchen with her grandfather and they're trying to make ends meet so they're also going through a lot and when these two girls meet they think they have nothing in common there's no way that they can be friends but they learn through friendship and bonding that they need each other to understand their own lives and to understand each other so it's a story of friendship it's a story of empathy it's a story of growth and it's beautiful. Highly recommend it. The next book off of our middle grade pile is Midnight at the Barclay Hotel by Floor Bradley and illustrated by Xavier Bonet. And already I know it's a mystery because of the spine label sticker, but I'm also gonna show you that a lot of books have quotes on them, either on the back or the front, but this one has one on the back and it's from Chris Grabenstein, who wrote the um, Mr. Lemoncello series. So if you read Mr. Lemoncello you, and you trust Chris Grabenstein's opinion, then you'll want to check out this book. So definitely look at the quotes because they're from authors of books that you might have already read and loved. Midnight at the Barclay Hotel is all about JJ and his mom being invited to a hotel, but turns out it's a whodunit story because there's been a murder at the hotel they were invited to and the, mur and the suspected murderer is none other than JJ's mom. They were driving to the hotel at the time of the murder. How could she have possibly done it? Well, JJ's trying to figure that out. So if you like whodunit mysteries, if you liked Mr. Lemoncello's library, if you liked the Westing game, then you'll really like this book because it's a little spooky, it's a little kooky, and it's a little funny. And it's a mystery. The next book off, book off our middle grade pile is Spindlefish and Stars by Christian N. Andrews. And this book is um, all about Greek mythology. So if you've read like the Rick Riordan series and you really, really dug the mythology of it, then check this book out. It's also a fantasy, which you can tell from the genre sticker. And it's about Chloe, who accidentally ends up on a mysterious island where she's, if she follows like a tapestry, she'll learn the secrets of the island and secrets about her own life and the people that she's looking for. And it all has to do with Greek mythology, as I said. So if you're interested in that subject, then check out this fantasy middle grade book. The next book on our middle grade pile is Which Way is Home by Maria Keeley, which is um, a historical fiction book, you can tell by the sticker. And it takes place in 1948 in Czechoslovakia. So it's after World War II and it's about Anna and her family and they're trying to flee Czechoslovakia after it's taken over. 
and they um, go into a place called No Man's Land and they must trust strangers along the way to help them leave the country and enter their new home. So have you read like The War That Saved My Life or The Night Diary or um, A Night Divided? You'll want to read this book, um, which is very similar, I think, to the recommendations I gave last week to My Brother's Keeper. I think I recommended all the three of those books for My Brother's Keeper. And that's the same with this one, because when you are doing recommendations as a librarian, you try to remember what's like the most popular book in a genre, in a series, like what are people reading? And then you bring those recommendations in and you recommend something that maybe people haven't heard of yet so that they can find read-alikes. So that's just a librarian tip for me to you. The final book in this pile of middle grade picks is Skunk and Badger by Amy Timberlake and illustrated by John Classen. This is a hilarious read aloud book for families to read together. It is very funny. I cried laughing while reading this middle grade book. So it's all about Skunk and Badger, as I said. And Badger really likes living alone. He really likes um, collecting rocks and having his own space, but then Skunk um, comes to live with him and pulls pranks and kind of just barrels into his life and Badger is like what am I supposed to do now? So it's a story of like unlikely friendship of someone with high energy coming in and someone with really low energy who's pretty chill just being like what am I supposed to do now? Um, who's, and Badger's a little bit grumpy about it. So it's um, really funny. I'm gonna read the first line. Usually like the first line is like an intention grabber in most books and this one does not disappoint. The line is, the first time Badger saw Skunk, he thought, puny, and shut the front door. It's hilarious. Check this book out.